Uh, she has lattice dystrophy. Um, you can see the central cornea is, uh, is very cloudy. It's not easy to appreciate the lattice-like changes, but you could see them when we were, um, when we were at the sit lamp. So uh, it wasn't severe. It's more like some sub-epi scarring, uh, almost like a combined type of endothelial dystrophy with some stromal changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to do a DALC, and, then, and if we're not successful, we'll do a PK. All right, I'm just marking the center of the cornea. I'll take that optical zone marker. So that's eight. We're, we're going to do like a seven, five graft. So we're going to go inside of that. Okay. So what we're doing now, so there's different ways to do DALC. Okay. The most popular way is the big bubble where you uh, do some partial trephination and then you inject uh, air into it. The way I learned is called the Mellis technique and um, it seems to have served me well. You can still perforate and you don't get a bare, you don't get bare decimase membrane, but you get good results. And at least in my hands, it's kind of what I always did. Now, what we do in this technique is we want to create a scleral tunnel here and burrow into clear cornea and then do a lamellar dissection. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a scleral groove here. Now, how deep do you want to go? You want to go about half scleral thickness, around about four or 500 microns. And how do you know that? Well, you start to see a little bit of the bluish uh, tint of the choroid underneath. So that looks maybe a little too superficial. Now I'm good. So now you can see I have enough depth where you can see the blade here, okay? but there's some thickness to it. You're not just about to perforate like you would if you're, if you're too thin, okay? So look, I'm flat here, and now I'm burrowing up into clear cornea. You see that passing the limbal vessels there? That's about as far as I need to go. Now when I need to go back, I cut going backwards like this so that I stay in the same tunnel. So now I always go back in the same groove. So I fixate the eye here. I enter again here. I'm in my same groove. And then I'm cutting as I go back. And then I wiggle forward just a little bit. Always keeping the base of that. And then I come back and I wiggle forward a little bit. I can tell I'm at a good depth here because uh, I'm pretty deep in the cornea, uh, maintaining a nice plane. So now we have our plane of dissection, OK? And so this is what that spatula looks like. It's called a Morlet spatula. It's made by um, Duckworth and Kent, and there's two sides to it. There's this side that has a little more of a cutting blade, and you can kind of enter with this, engage the depth, and then this is what you use for dissection, and you can see it can reach across the cornea, and it has a little bit of a curve to it. Now, before I do this, what I have to do is I have to put air in the anterior chamber so that the eye is so firm. If I try to do it with a soft eye like this, decimase membrane is more likely to bunch up and then tear. Okay, so where do I make this incision? We're gonna fill the AC with air. So I wanna make it inferiorly, so I'm gonna rotate the eye down a little bit, and I make a little stab incision at the, at the limbus. So now I'm in the eye, okay? I'm letting aqueous out. All right, so we now got a bubble, okay? Now, you see how the bubble wants to escape? So I need to put a suture through that so that it stays uh, closed. Okay, now we need to put that air bubble and make it full now. So now we're uh, pretty firm. So I'll take the Morlet spatula back and then we're gonna put some viscoelastic on it and that helps to keep it a little smooth. And then this part is just real tedious. So now you see I'm in the right plane and I'm just dissecting like that. And it's fairly easy. You can see how nice it moves. It's very smooth. And then here you're like just making little micro movements. And you're kind of watching to make sure the pressure stays high. The trick here is you got to keep this guy has to stay flat and you have to respect the curve of the eye. If you start to lift up this, then you're pushing down here like a, like a pedal and you end up getting a, a perforation. And so, uh, we're about halfway through with the dissection. You can see I'm crossing the half cornea there. So doing the dissection, everything's going fine. You're just calm, doing the same thing. Reach in. I want to reach across to get to that edge of that uh, mark. That's the trick. 
once you're over there, you can stop, make sure you're on the right side. So the dissection right now is about this area. I haven't reached that completely, but I think I'm going to be okay because um, I don't really have, that's fairly close to the limbus and we're going to be a half a millimeter inside of this. So I think I have enough dissection there. Now we need to dissect this area over here. So I'm going to put a little more viscoelastic. A dalk over a PK is very helpful because less chance of rejection, less chance of post-op problems. So I got close to my incision here and I let some of the air out through the wound there. So now I touch the eye and it's kind of soft. So I'm gonna put a little more air and then we're just gonna dissect. All right, that's nice and firm. That's this last part here. So we're good. Gonna soften the eye. So I go back in my wound here and I'm gonna take out that air. That worked. Okay. <laughs> so now we have a lamellar dissection of the cornea and then there's a bubble in the AC and the chamber's flat. So her, her orbit's kind of small, palpebral fissure small. So there's some posterior pressure. That's why that bubble came out so fast. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, inject some helon into that potential space we just created. You see that bubble move? That tells me that the helon has filled all this space, except right here, because the bubble hasn't gone right there yet. Now, the reason she's squeezing a little bit is keeping why I can't deepen the chamber so much. So I'm going to open the speculum a little bit. And now we're able to push that bubble all the way to the edge of the dissection. So there's a big space here. We've pushed posteriorly what we dissected. So now when we truffinate here, we're gonna, not going to hit that area. How far do we want to go? We don't want to go that far. Maybe her cornea is probably about 600 microns, so we want to go about maybe 300, something like that. Okay, we got good suction. I'm right on the dot. You can see that there, guys. And so I haven't hit the epithelium yet. Now I just hit it. So then every uh, half turn is about 60 microns. So we're about 60 there. That's 120. That's 180. About 250. About 370, 325. About 400. Now I'm going to move real slowly. There's around one more, one more quarter turn. Now we're going to enter that potential space. And where do I want to enter? I want to enter at about 11 o'clock here. I, if I go in here, that's where the dissection is the least done, right? Here you know that because of the wound, it's most full, filled with helon. So I grab this and I kind of, I pull it to the middle so I can expose that area. And then you see the viscoelastic come right there. So now I know I'm in the right space, okay? So now I gotta get these forceps in. So I gotta go in like that and then be drilled gentle, okay? So you can see the dissection is incomplete there. I'm going to end up cutting this in two parts here. I'm going to remove this in a little bit with a different dissection. Almost done, guys. And then I just need to dissect that little ring off and I'll be good. The depth is beautiful. We can yeah. see the depth is great. Uh, but this ring is not ideal. Okay, so how do we fix that? I'm going to put some more air in. So what I'm going to do is kind of just dissect this a little bit more. And that's creating a little more gap under here. I don't even have to dissect anymore. It's, it's going to create some overlap so that I'm able to leave that little rim of tissue and just suture into it and it'll be fine because it'll get pushed back into that space I'm creating, like a little bit of a tuck. So this is a 54-year-old donor. And uh, what we have to do is we have to remove Decimase membrane now that we're going to do a doll. 
we're staining Decimase here so we can peel it off. I just mashed on it a lot and now there's gonna be some little marks, you see? All those marks, they wouldn't be there if I didn't just mash on it, okay? So now what do we have to do? We can use the crescent blade here to, to strip it off. You can see here, this is where the scleral spur right here is. You see how you can start there and you can peel it away from that. That's where the neural crest cells in the ectoderm start. And then we're gonna do the same on this quadrant, strip it down. So that's all coming together here. We got that decimase. Okay, so we got the little circle to help us. And then that, that circle we got right here, that's helping me to see this rim so I can center it better. You want to see a little bit of purple all the way around. It looks good. And then we got the same size, 7.5. Spin it, make sure it's okay, and then lift, and then we got a sicornia there. There's a little bit of some arcus here. I don't love that. So I want to put the ar arcus up here on top so it's covered by the patient's lid. So you see the depth is 50% here. You see that? 50%. And then into the recipient, I'm going to go full thickness or like close to it. So I go just right here and then out at the limbus. So watch how much I tie this here. See how tight it is? And then I lock it forward like that. It's so, it's so tight that you can see the tissue getting white. What I want to do is I grab it here and I look to see where the bend goes on this. And I pretend where I'm going to put it and so see if the same distance is on each side there. So this looks pretty good. And then I go half thickness. This is the most important suture. So when I place it, I want to make sure the gap is the same. It, that's too much to the right, that's too much to the left. So that's just right, right there. And so I normally do like an eight, eight interrupted sutures and a 16 running, so that's what I'll do. And see how it gets in a nice position like that. Real tight, and then lock it. Rotate it back. Okay, so now we just need these two. So you kind of do that. Where does it want to go? It wants to go right there. So get it nice and tight like that. And then lock. And you tie it without disturbing that knot there. The difference uh, between the second four sutures and the first four is with the first four, you got to tie them as you go so it sits down nicely. Now we can pass a few and it's faster because we can tie them afterwards. So again, we want to crank them down and we're going to have eight interrupted. So these are all interrupted. I'm going to put one more through the scleral tunnel and one to close the conge and then we're going to use a running suture to, to finish it off. So you can see it's kind of hard to, you got to learn to be able to crank them down and, uh, and use uh, locks effectively where they don't open. Okay, so we got all our interrupteds here. There's a little bit of a gap there, but otherwise it sits nicely, but you still we need more sutures. We couldn't just have this. Rotate the knot, and then where do I like to leave the knots? I like to leave the knots inside the donor graft, just inside, so they're easier, to me they're easier to take out that way. I kinda wanna put one more suture right there. Okay, now we're going to close the conge.
All right, so the last suture I'm going to place is just going to be a running. So, so when you do a running suture, we're going to do the same 50% through the donor, 100% or 90% through the recipient. So kind of just radial these two between every suture. So we adjust the tension by getting the loose slack out of the line. I'm just cleaning it off from that blood. And then a little trick is to put some viscoelastic right here at the, the knot so you can bury it a little easier. Okay, so what you do is you get a little slack here. I got some slack, get some slack. So there's slack here, there's slack, you see? And then you grab here and you put it under and then you even out the slack again. A little bit more, get all that. There we go, perfect. Uh, and now she has a bubble in the AC, you just leave that. That's going to help to make the decimes uh, here, but she doesn't have to position tonight. But uh, we're all done. Uh, got a nice got a nice graph there, so it should be good. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guys.